Welcome back. Still to come is dieting a total waste of time and the latest in sport and weather. But first, it's over to Niall Ross for more on the mayhem caused by outlaw bikers in Waco, Texas. Our white character. They are the critics' darlings, programs that showcase Boyfriend our multicultural white, community. But True many in the industry are concerned no that TV to remains them. far too white. One of these people is Joyce Yuen, an agent who has represented ethnic actors for over 20 years. She says too um, often TV takes a tokenistic Italian? approach to casting. Sometimes in the show there's already an ethnic actor or not Anglo actor. And they, yes, I do get that feeling that, you know, well, we've already got an Asian actor. We don't need another Asian actor. And when roles do appear, they're often in the form of racial stereotypes. Asian gangsters or Asian businessmen, um, yeah, those are probably the most common roles they put them into. But Dr Blinda Smale from Monash University says TV is making some headway when it comes to presenting a variety of faces on the box. Milestones I can think of are shows like East West 101. Uh, we also have Red Fern Now, which has been you know, a real kind of flagship show in terms of Indigenous representation. It's the commercial networks that Dr Smale says aren't pulling their weight, broadcasting almost exclusively white content. And it's our most popular dramas like Neighbours that she says have the most work to do. Explain One person intimately aware of TV's racial divide is Monique Gunaratna, the former Neighbours star whose on-screen family were written out of the soap. They took the steps forward in leading the way on commercial television and it was just a bit, you know, a bit sad to see them kind of take that step backwards. Gunaratna now fronts a committee trying to increase diversity on our screens, a move she says will have an impact on how non-white Australians see themselves. I think it's important to show our younger generation that you can have brown skin and speak with an Australian accent and that is normal and fine and accepted. And that's when good neighbours become good friends. That's radical. <laughs> Mark Carney, Newsline. And now to breaking news on Gina Reinhardt's legal battle with her children. Here's Mark Carney. Yes, Rachel, the world's richest woman, mining magnate Gina Reinhart, has lost her legal battle to maintain control of the multi-billion dollar family trust. The Supreme Court of New South Wales today granted control of the trust to Bianca Reinhart, Gina's estranged daughter. Legal proceedings have been underway since 2011, when Bianca and brother John launched action against their mother, alleging she acted deceitfully by denying them access to their inheritance. Refugee activists are calling on the Australian government to include Syrian asylum seekers currently in detention as part of the 12,000 refugees they'll take from the war-torn nation. Mark Carney reports. The Refugee Action Coalition's Ian Rintoul says while the exact number of Syrian asylum seekers in detention remains uncertain, there are at least two in Villawood, three on Nauru and another on Manus Island. Those in detention are only able to apply for a temporary protection visa and face being returned to Syria if their application is rejected. One asylum seeker denied refugee status by Australia was returned to Syria a fortnight ago and has not been heard from since. Mr Rintoul accuses the government of politicising the humanitarian crisis. The, you know, the government doesn't have to look uh, to the camps in Syria. Uh, it can look to do something for the people that they've actually had in detention for over, over 26 months and I think it speaks volumes of the you know, so the, uh, the very selective and the very politically selective way the government has gone about responding to this. President of the Australian Human Rights Commission, Gillian Triggs, has also called for the permanent resettlement to include Syrian detainees. Mark Carney, Triple R News. A community forum held in Melbourne last night has called on the state and federal governments to make HIV prevention drug PrEP more affordable. The drug, which is being clinically trialled in Australia, could help guard the thousands of gay and bisexual men most at risk of infection. But Victorian AIDS Council acting CEO Kent Burgess says the drug can cost as much as $100 a month and is out of reach for many in the community. We're absolutely calling on the state government to step in um, and provide funding uh, for those are most at risk and our call to the federal government would be that they need to fast track the process of listing of this uh, medication. The Melbourne Fringe Festival enters its second week today and tribute acts are taking centre stage. This year's festival features performers who impersonate Dolly Parton and Edith Piaf. 
Cabaret artist Ashley Creveld, who is performing a show about the late Amy Winehouse, says pop stars are a rich source of theatrical material. People kind of find an interest in celebrity or things like that and then people just want to pay tribute to them because they either touch their lives with their music or they see them in the media and they feel kind of like they know them. So Idol finishes, yes. uh, the other shows, not so much up your alley anymore. But last year, you decided to make a, an appearance. I did. Four weeks in, in yes. the end. On Gold. that uh, stalwart of a program, Dancing yes. with the Stars. What led you to want to join well, I DWTS? Made a, I, uh, I look, I, I initially said no, and because uh, I get asked every year to do Celebrity Apprentice, just this thing and that thing, and uh, and I generally have said no up until now, basically because I'm a barrister, uh, and for the last five years I've been a barrister, so I, I didn't want to do things that might uh, be difficult in terms of being in court one day. But but I'd made an album with my family called The Holden Brothers Travelling Circus. Yeah, we might just bring a So you're taken from Harare, and then you landed in Sydney? Sydney. Wow, what's that like? <laughs> I'd never seen an African child before, like much. And everything was so different. I remember I got pimples from people touching my skin too much. Mm. And I got into a little bit of little issues like cultural differences and stuff. It was hard to settle. To be honest, it was hard to settle. But my advantage was I loved to sing and I used to sing on assembly. So a lot of people gave me attention and wanted to be my friend. Although...